Hello and a very warm welcome to Money Control. Today we have with us Mr. Suman Sinha, who is the founder, chairperson, and the CEO of Renew, one of India's largest renewable energy companies. Uh, hello, Mr. Sinha, and congratulations for your book. First of all, uh, I would straight away uh, get on to the questions. Uh, firstly, uh, are you bullish on India? I am very bullish on India. And your I reasons for that? I think that you know the next 25 years truly are going to be uh, India's years because a lot of the basic fundamentals have come together very nicely for India. Demographics, um, you know, the the domestic demand, uh, all of that is uh, really I think going to and and also the health of the financial uh, sector. Uh, corporates have delevered themselves, uh, so all of these things I think are going to lead to. Um, very strong growth in the Indian economy over the next many years. And I think the fact that we've had um, a uh, fairly stable political environment for the last nine years mm -hmm. has certainly helped bringing all these fundamental facts together. Um, and so my sense is that, uh, you know, the Prime Minister talks about Amrit Kal, um, and I, I truly believe that that is going to be the case. And just to give an example, uh, you know, India is in a way where China was 25 years ago. And in the 25 years after that, uh, China grew at 10 to 12 percent every year. Now, India might not grow at 10 to 12 percent, but certainly we will grow at 7 to 8 percent at the very least. And that itself will mean that over the next 20 years, the Indian economy will grow multiple fold of where it is right now. And I think really position India as one of the top three economies, uh, not very far away from the top two economies, if not being actually in the top two itself. So I think I'm very bullish on India right now. Right. And energy transition is turning out to be a big theme globally, right? Uh, now we are seeing countries competing against each other for green hydrogen and battery storage. In that context, uh, how do you see India's a role in this whole th uh, theme? And also, what are the challenges that do you see for India uh, in this uh, entire energy transition phase that we are looking at? Yeah, look, India is already the third largest emitter of carbon. Of carbon, okay, uh, and just given all the growth that is to come in India over the next uh, several decades, which we talked about earlier, India's carbon emissions, if left uh, unchecked or if we just carry on with business as usual, are likely to grow several times, and that is not going to be good for the world, and it certainly will not be good for India, because as we know, India has one of the most vulnerable populations to climate change, and so it's actually very good that in the Indian government is actually addressing this problem head on rather than shying away from it. Um, and, and one of the most important aspects of that is the energy transition, which accounts for a large part of the carbon emissions. And in that, we know that India right now is in the midst of a very fundamental, transformative, once in a lifetime kind of energy transition, uh, where we are moving from fossil fuel based uh, systems to uh, clean energy based systems. And of course, the whole growth of renewable energy is moving us in that direction. But in addition to that, you talked about the batteries, you talked about green hydrogen. All of those are going to be very fundamental in driving this change and really broad basing the whole accessibility of clean energy into multiple sectors of the Indian economy. Uh, this is going to be very exciting uh, in terms of how it's going to play out. And that's really what I talk about in the book as well. And you know, what about the infra opportunity in India and what do you think uh, needs to be done more, uh, you know, to boost infra, especially in the energy sector? And also if you could uh, talk a bit more about the challenges uh, in India's journey. Well, you know, I think that um, uh, energy is an absolute core part of infrastructure. Uh, there is going to be, uh, if we are to meet our targets, which we have to because we don't have a choice, we have to service the needs of a large growing population and a large growing economy, we need to essentially uh, increase our entire energy system by uh, double of what it is right now in the next seven years, which really means creating uh, over the next 20 years uh, an energy system of the size of the entire European Union energy system uh, over this time period. And so it's going to lead to a lot of opportunities. It's going to lead to a lot of infrastructure development because we will obviously need to build out generation capacity. We will need to build out transmission infrastructure. We'll have to have much larger amounts of, as I said earlier, batteries and green hydrogen. The whole user side of the, eco of the economy will also have to change. People will uh, hopefully move towards electric vehicles. Um, corporates will move towards decarbonized 
uh, energy systems of their own uh, and start using more and more clean energy and more and more green hydrogen and so on. Uh, so entire swathes of the Indian industrial economy will over this period of time become green. So I think there will be a lot of infrastructure development that will happen as a result of that. Also there will be a whole manufacturing industry that will get set up uh, as India looks to become Atma Nirbhar uh, in this time period uh, as far as equipment supply is concerned. Now in terms of the challenges, look there are of course going to be challenges as well. I think the first one is the fact that we have to uh, make sure that policy is correct. Uh, so far it has been correct. Uh, we have to continue to make sure that in the future as well, whichever governments are there, continue to make sure that we go down this path in the most optimal manner. The second of course is that we need uh, land. We need land to uh, essentially put up all these generation assets and so on. Uh, get right away for transmission infrastructure and so on. So all of that will require a lot of effort as well. Uh, and then of course we have to make sure that the grid stays balanced because obviously uh, you know with all this uh, intermittent renewable energy coming in the grid has to you know has to become very robust uh, and stay strong. And there are of course technologies available that can allow us to do that. We just need to make sure that those come into place uh, in the right way uh, over this time period as well. Uh, and then I think we'll need uh, large amounts of capital. We'll need almost $500 billion just for the energy se electricity sector over the next uh, seven to eight years. All that capital has to come from somewhere. A lot of it will come from domestic sources, but we will also need capital to come in from outside. The good news is that because the Indian opportunity is so attractive right now globally, there is a lot of capital that is looking to play in the Indian uh, clean energy space. And that therefore allows us to fill some of these gaps that might be coming up uh, in the future and we ourselves have 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 you know uh, raised capital from a number of different sources and it's partly of course i would like to believe that is because we are a good counterparty but it's also partly because uh, the indian uh, whole clean energy situation is at such an in attractive uh, inflection point you mentioned uh, decarbonization last time when we met in february that was the rebranding of renew energy from to renew uh, that time you said that uh, Renew is transitioning to be a, also to be a decarbonization solutions provider. Uh, could you give an update on uh, how is that going for Renew? Sure, it's going quite well, I, I would say. Uh, the couple of uh, new areas that we're looking at, of course, the most important is green hydrogen, where we are moving now from only generating electrons to also generating molecules, uh, green hydrogen molecules. And then from green hydrogen, you have the derivatives, which are green ammonia, you have methanol, and then you have sustainable aviation fuel as well. So all of that derives from green hydrogen, and that allows us to essentially address, uh, you know, almost two times the energy system uh, as compared to the electricity sector. So this is going to be very important. Um, so that's one big, uh, you know, move with, that we made is to get into uh, green hydrogen. Uh, and there, as you know, we have a joint venture with uh, Indian Oil and LNT for addressing the domestic Indian market. And for the export market, we are looking at uh, developing projects both in India and outside India. And we are talking to a number of potential customers for buying uh, this offtake. But this whole green hydrogen business will gather steam as we go forward and will become very mainstream by 2030, by the end of this decade. The second thing we're doing is we're also developing a carbon offsets business. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of work that we're doing in that area. Uh, we're also looking at the digital area. Uh, that's another area that is very important because as you set up more and more of this capacity, right. we have to make sure that we extract every ounce of performance. Right. And that is best done through digital interventions, digital tools and techniques. So those are some of the other areas that we've got into. And then of course manufacturing because you know we need to set up a big manufacturing industry in India. Um, and so uh, you know we felt that this is something that we must do as well. Uh, in, in the context of our obligation towards nation building. And so that is an area that we're looking at as well. And uh, what uh, is the is your partnership with uh, Petronas's uh, Gentari uh, about green hydrogen mostly? Or is it also going to be about uh, other uh, segments of uh, new energy sources or renewable energy? No, actually our agreement with Gentari is mostly around renewable energy. Right. Uh, the idea is that we've signed up a 5 gigawatt MOU with them. Right where they will over time acquire that much capacity from us, either built assets or new projects that we are developing. Um, and so that's really what it is about. 
Okay, so it's not mostly primarily for green hydrogen. No, it is not. It's a, for no, renewable no, energy. No, absolutely. All right. And also talking about, you know, India has this aspiration now, mm-hmm. which many believe uh, of being a $5 trillion dollar economy, mm-hmm. right? Which many believe is going to probably come sooner by 2027 or so. Uh, given that, what do you see? How do you see India's energy sector's role in achieving this uh, $5 trillion dollar economy for India? Yeah, well, look, I think India is going to hit five trillion. We're already at about three, three, three and a half trillion dollars. So if you just do the math and extrapolate at about six to eight percent uh, on average, you know, literally in the next five or six years, we will hit that target. Uh, during this time, our electricity demand will also keep increasing at five to seven percent of growth every year. Uh, August was already the, the record month in which we hit a peak demand of, I think, 235 yes. gigawatts or thereabouts. Uh, and so that'll that'll increase to perhaps 350 gigawatts by the end of this decade, uh, which means a lot of new generation capacity has to come on stream, and a lot of this grid balancing, storage, pumped hydro, transmission build out, all of that will have to come into play. Uh, if that doesn't happen, obviously g- the growth in the Indian economy will get held back. Quality of life will suffer because there'll be brownouts. We obviously don't want to have that happen, uh, and so therefore the energy sector, which is fundamental to the growth of the economy will have to grow along with the, the growth of the Indian economy and in fact drive the growth of the Indian economy. So it has a very central role to play. Right. And uh, overall in India's energy transition, mm-hmm. how do you see Renew's role in it? Well, you know, I think Renew, as far as renewable energy is concerned, will have a central role to play. Uh, we're already India's largest renewable energy company with almost a 10% market share. We would hope that that would continue. And uh, as we add another uh, you know, 300 odd gigawatts in the remaining seven years uh, of this decade, uh, we would hope to, you know, uh, get our market share in that. Um, and also, of course, we don't want to just be a renewable energy gen- generator because that's, of course, what we'll do as our core business. But as I said, we'll also diversify into green hydrogen, carbon offsets, and really become a full fledged decarbonization partner for corporates and become, you know, uh, or stay uh, a partner for the Indian government as it looks to achieve these ambitions at a national level, we hope to certainly play a central role in that. You're launching a book today and uh, you need to tell us about it, starting from the title, because I want people to hear it from your mouth. Sure. Uh, So the book is called Fossil Free, uh, Reimagining Clean Energy in a Carbon Constrained World. Um, And we are living in a carbon constrained world. So the the, sort of the subtitle is very self-evident. Fossil Free, because that's really where we have to move. I think uh, we now need to design, totally redesign and reimagine our energy systems to becoming totally uh, just sort of carbon zero. And uh, that means much more renewable energy, much more change on the generation side as well as on the user side. And, um, uh, you know, because the need of the hour is so strong, uh, climate change is so much upon us that we really don't have a choice. We need to move as fast as possible. And because there are a lot of misconceptions about this whole area, that is why I decided to put all of these learnings that I've had in this industry uh, for the last uh, 15 years into a book so that, you know, it's easy to read and people can really understand how this whole, you know, how, how, what is the issue with climate change? How does it relate to energy? Uh, what can be done to deal with this whole climate change issue? And why in any case, uh, this whole clean energy transition is in fact leaving aside even climate change economically is the right thing for India to do and how India in fact is playing a very leading role um, in making that transformation happen to moving from a carbon based economy to becoming a carbon light economy. You also uh, I believe have a special chapter now on uh, green hydrogen in your book. Uh, Is that driven by India's push for green hydrogen with all the policies and now we have a definition as well. So uh, what is it going to capture? Yeah, the reason I've added a chapter on green hydrogen is because, as I said, green hydrogen is going to be very fundamental to really extending the clean energy transition from just electricity, which is only a quarter of all energy emissions, to just much more broadly the whole energy sector. And uh, and it is just starting off right now, so people may not be aware of how important it might become, but certainly over the next five to ten years, it will become a very, very large area. And it, uh, it is also a way for a country like India to cut back on its dependence on fossil fuels. And you know, we are a big importer of fossil fuels. We import almost $150 billion worth of fossil fuels 
every year and you might some might say that you know that is india's in the indian economy's achilles heel uh, every time oil prices go up of course it's it's very bad for india and so uh, creating a green hydrogen economy instead will actually become a way for us to cut that dependence and truly become atmanirbhar and that is why i think the prime minister is also uh, so focused on pushing forward the whole green hydrogen ecosystem and that's why i have covered that opportunity and and what that entails Uh, in a chapter in the in a book in, in the and, book as well. And uh, juxtaposing India's stand on green hydrogen and the definition, uh, we know the European. Uh, it's a n- their definition is a bit rigid uh, now, and uh, the incentives given by the US. Uh, given that, how do you see India's green hydrogen mission going forward, and uh, how how do we push exports? Because that's what the first movers are eyeing on. Yeah, I think uh, there is a lot of conversation going on, a lot of discussion happening between India and other countries, particularly the European Union, which, as you said, has the most stringent definition of green hydrogen. I think that eventually there will be alignment. Uh, there will be alignment, and you know, India therefore will then be able to export green hydrogen uh, from India. Uh, I think uh, that the EU definitions were really very stringent, um, and in some ways were almost like a non-tariff barrier. Uh, but i think that is being addressed and i think as that does get addressed hopefully over time we'll have a single common definition for what is green hydrogen all over the world and uh, that then you know will allow us to export large quantities from india oh uh, could you give me a break up of uh, renews uh, plan uh, i mean investment mm-hmm. plans in renewable energy and green hydrogen yeah it's a little bit premature to do that to be honest uh, obviously uh, you know that we have uh, 5.7 gigawatts of projects that we are building out this year and next year and the total capex required for that is about 35000 crores uh, that is something that you've talked about publicly uh, green hydrogen to the extent you know it will take time for the green hydrogen uh, business to develop uh, but those those capexes will be i would say two or three years down the road so uh, so it really depends on how uh, the offtake side builds up and uh, how quickly corporates decide to uh, Uh, to decarbonize their hydrogen business and uh, is renew planning to uh, kind of bid for uh, the incentives uh, green hydrogen and production and electrolyzer manufacturing we'll see we haven't yet formed a uh, final view on that so we'll we'll evaluate it carefully and then see whether it makes sense for us to do that but otherwise what's your view is it is it too uh, little an amount to start give a push to the industry or well you know the reality is that uh, Uh, that uh, as as manufacturers or as users we'd obviously always ask for more subsidy right. uh, i think the government has certain limitations and we have to recognize that we have to find other ways to bring the cost down uh, rather than only through subsidies other ways like other ways like technology interventions bring the production cost down be innovative in how we how we generate the renewable power to uh, power the electrolyzer so we have to i think come up with different mechanisms and ways to uh, keep the cost down you also mentioned your uh, partnership uh, with uh, iucl and lnt mm-hmm. that's been announced a while ago but uh, we could you give us an update on what actually is happening in terms of uh, activity in that sure. uh, yeah so we've signed the we've signed the binding agreement the company is now being set up and uh, it'll be active very soon uh, very soon if you could give us very a soon is a matter of maybe uh, uh, weeks all right yeah. okay and what would be the first uh, kind of task or what is it going to do what it is going to do is that uh, anybody who wants to convert their gray hydrogen into green hydrogen okay. and um, needs advice on how to do that or needs a supplier of that green hydrogen this company essentially will be that supplier all right so that was mr suman sinha thank you so much thank you for talking to money control and congratulations for your book thank you so much thank you